Shut up, folks. Just a little closer, please. And marvel at the greatest show on earth. You don't have to buy a thing, folks. And I'll meet Princess Laughing Eyes, who will thrill you with her golden voice. Uh-huh. <laughs> Ladies, notice the whiteness of her skin. And she was born a full-blooded Kickapoo Indian. If you, too, want a complexion of patrician pallor, just take Princess Laughing Eyes' herb compound. Why, it'd make sitting bull look like a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> and here's Mr. William J. Brady. He's performed before the crowned heads of Europe, Asia, and the South Seas. Step up a little closer, folks. Prepare to be amazed at his death-defying exhibition of revolver marksmanship. Step up, folks. Step up. Up, down, all over the town. We're looking for Joe O'Grady. He's about so high and his one good eye finds every bar in the town. Here, there, and most everywhere, they're tracking down Joe Grady. When they get poor Joe, you will see him go down to the old county jail. Where is Joe? Where is Joe? Has anyone seen Joe Grady? There's a room for him and a broom. I'd like to have that fella gunning for you. I'd like to have him gunning for some fellas I know. This town needs a man like that for sheriff. When Joe Brady goes out, they love it. This would be a swell spot for me to try my walk over. Listen, you've tried that stuff 50 times. I ain't going to have you spoiling things now. Oh, 
Follow me. You better head for Laramie Gap, Mr. Belden. You and your money will be safe there. Laramie Gap? Well, how did you ever get there? I never saw the day. I'm about a horse. I'm heading up there. You go on. Leather carbon. Someone here do work like that? 
Yeah, Andy there used to run a saddle store in town till Ripper's gang robbed him of his last cent and left him for dead. And all of you were in business in Deadwood? Or trying to get in. Bert Snell, you under no sooner hit town to start up a rest until Ripper cleaned him. Well, how come they can get away with it? Aren't there any good folks in Deadwood? With all these mines booming, no one's got time to look after the other fella. Besides, most of the decent citizens are tenderfeet like me, and not much good against a man like Ripper. Say, uh, do you know that girl that sent us up here? She sort of saved our bacon. Yeah, uh, Linda Barry. She works for Ted Carver. She runs the newspaper that's trying to clean up this town. Say, how did she come to know about you people? Her dad is my best friend. He got held up and killed last year. He found a secret way in here. Then there's another entrance? Yeah, and it sure comes in handy when the sheriff's after you. Well, we owe her some thanks. I think I'll head down that way tomorrow and deliver them personally. You better not, young fella. Likely you won't come back. How does this sound, Linda? The city of Deadwood must realize that it is indeed a city with all the civic responsibilities that this entails. What if we are 200 miles from a railroad? Our mines have brought us wealth, theaters, even a telephone exchange one of the first of these newfangled contraptions west of the Mississippi River. It's high time we settle down. It's all right as far as it goes. Well, don't think I won't lambaste him about that cold-blooded murder at Seth Belden's store. I'm going to ask where Sheriff Jordan was while that was going on. Makes my blood boil to think you're being endangered by a pack of ruffians like that. Didn't you point out those people at Laramie Gap are being blamed for Ripper's work? I know it was Ripper. I saw him with my own eyes. I know it, Linda, but I can't say it. The minute Ripper finds out I know too much about him, I'm a dead man. What about the Civic League? Can't they do anything? Not until we get a new sheriff and some law in this town. Why, what are you doing here? Well, I just come back to thank you, ma'am. We got away all right. But don't you know that whole gang's out gunning for you? Well, I don't reckon they got too good a look at me. Besides, I bought myself a new shirt and a new hat. Maybe that'll fool them. Do you really think so? I'm afraid you might be out looking for trouble. Not me, ma'am. Anyway, I'd hate to think anybody could keep me from coming to see you. I admire your courage, fellow, but I doubt your wisdom. This is, uh... Bill Brady. Mr. Carver. Howdy. Still, maybe that's what we need in this town. A little more courage and a little less wisdom. Mister, you sure have a pleasant way calling a man crazy. You going out, ma'am? Yes, I'm going to interview Mrs. Green, the postmaster's wife. She's just had twins. Would well, you mind if I walk away with you? I'd like to find out more about this time. See you again. Now, that's what I call a right fast moving young fella. Yes, isn't it? This coach is covered with iron plates. First one I ever saw like that. Nobody's ever held up that stagecoach yet. And millions of dollars have traveled to the railroad in it.
Oh, excuse me, young fellow. What do you intend to do with him? You surely don't mean to put him in jail, do you? That's exactly what I aim to do. <laughs> well, I admire the gesture, but I warn you, that little weasel won't stay there long. Do you know him? Well, I ought to. I'm the judge here. But I never get a chance to try the men I'd like to. And Monty Burns here is one of them. What's your name, young fellow? Bill Breen. Judge Gary. Glad to know you, Judge. I want to see the look on the sheriff's face when you hand Monty over to him. This fellow just threw a knife at me, and that's attempted murder in any man's town, even in Deadwood. Slap some iodine on him and lock him up. Stuart, you know what it'll get you. Are you going to lock him up, or do I have to? Why can't you convict any of these men? Aren't you a federal judge? The sheriff makes sure that I never get the evidence. They're afraid to harm a federal judge for fear it'll bring in the troops. But my court is just a mockery. Is there somebody in town who can do something about that? Well, there's a civic league. I've talked to them, but nothing happened. Well, maybe we can do something about it, Judge. Well, I wish you luck, Brady. Thanks. I find the way he was undercutting my prices at the Emporium. So under our agreement, we owe Ripper $2,500 for relieving us of Belton's competition. $2,500? Seth Belton wasn't doing that much business. Ripper's costing us a lot more than we expected in the beginning. Mr. Stark, will you please collect the money from the gentleman? You got no kick at paying Ripper, considering he and his men knocked over 32 miners last month. For a total of $26,000, of which we took the 50-50 split for spotting the prospect in our business establishment. I'd like to take a look at those figures. They look all right. I never swore I spotted more than 32 prospects in my store alone. You can't expect Ripper to get them all. And when you figure that you doubled your profit by selling those fool miners their outfits and then collected their take, Ripper's doing plenty. Maybe so. That medicine show, gunman Brady brought in Monty here. Judge Gary was with him, and I had to lock him up for a few minutes. What do you want me to do with him? Do? Nothing, of course. But the, the bail. Don't you think I ought to have a little bail? Yeah, mighty little. Here's a dollar. Buy yourself a drink. What happened? I missed him, and he got me in the arm. He greased lightning with a gun. Nothing to worry about, gentlemen. But Bill Brady seems to be pretty tough, but we'll take care of him. Well, I think the main business of the meeting's been attended to. Shall we adjourn to my bar? something for you, Gabby. Sure to be a bill. I have got anything else in my whole life. Why don't you open it? Been getting along all right for seven months. No need to bother it now. I met Judge Gary today, Clem. He claims he can do something if we give him the right kind of evidence. But that's hard to get. It might not be if we can find out why Ripper's been keeping the folks from starting up in business. Well, I've always said he was doing it for that civic league. But Ted Carver always writes in his paper that the Civic League is for law and order. But maybe Ted Carver's been fooled. That league is made up of all the big businessmen in Deadwood. Maybe they're trying to kill off competition. You notice they never invited Seth Belden to join them. 
And none of the rest of them newcomers in Deadwood. If they were honest, a fellow like Jake Marvel couldn't belong to them. Why, it's as plain as day. Ripper works for Marvel. Marvel works for the Civic League. Sheriff works for all of them. What you fellas have been needing is somebody to figure these things out for you. That's right. And do something about it. You're darn stupid. We've been thinking we need someone to show us how to clean up Deadwood so we can go back there again. Well, of course, I didn't mean to him. <laughs> so we're asking you, Bill, if you'll take the job. Thanks. I'll do what I can, but I can't do it here. Hey, Gabby, I just found out today that the sheriff can't keep us from putting on her show. As if we stay on the outside of the city limits. Well, let's go down tomorrow and set up in business right on the edge of the town. Yeah, what about Ripper? Won't he be shooting us up? Ripper? <laughs> you just leave Ripper to me. That is, Bill and me. <laughs> Sundown on the rangeland, and we're heading down the trail. Can I tell you, business is booming, Deadwood? This is nearly all that's left. While you're selling that, I'll mix up another batch. That is, if I eat all out of rattlesnake juice. <laughs> on the rangeland, and the herd is looking frail. Hear that maverick ball, he'll be missing his small Give me that letter. Anybody thinks we're going to pay him anything, we might as well find out who it is. Jogging across the plain. To the squeaking of the saddle and the rattling rain. It's on the last one. Oh, don't bother me with such trivial matters. Read that. Read it. Read what it says. I don't think it says what I think it says. Please be advised that from the estate of your Uncle Marmaduke W. Blackstone, deceased, you have been willed a sum of $36,000. Read that last part again. $36,000. That's what I thought it said. Three, six, oh, oh, oh. This money will be forwarded upon your order. What are you going to do? Telegraph office in town, ain't they? I'll wire first thing in the morning and then send it to the bank. <gasps> oh, we're rich. Get along, get along, get along, old pal. Down the train. All right, Francis, it's your turn to sing. Sing? I'm going to do more than sing. <laughs> oh, I did it. <laughs> Something I can do for you, sir? This is no minor transaction. I should like to see the president. I'm the president. Oh. Well, I'm Blackstone, Professor Mortimer Blackstone. I'm expecting some money by wire from New York. Did he get here? I'm very glad to know you, Professor. Yes, it came a half hour ago. I have the confirmation here. Rather a large amount. A mere trifle. I'll take it in thousand-dollar bills and some small kids. calls for thousand dollar bills but i think i can find enough to cover this amount just a moment please there you are i have it up hmm issued by the third avenue bank in new york eh? nice little city in new york got a fine zoo there you don't mind my saying so that's a lot of money to carry around this town i'd be glad to keep it on deposit here for you no oh, think nothing of it why i've been taking care of large sums all my life Besides, I've got a lazy here. Why, my dear child, a few paltry dollars mean nothing to the Blackstone family. 
Oh. You ain't never had no fancy clothes like them yourself. Oh, think nothing of it, Papa. A few paltry dollars mean nothing to the Blackstone family. <laughs> going to be an opera singer and perform before the crown heads of Europe. I get aboard six elephants, four giraffes, a gorilla. And... I heard about your robbery. I can't tell you how sorry I am. This is what we've been up against for years. Well, I'll write another editorial. I might as well write them in water for all the good they do. If Jake Marvel's the man Ripper works for, he must bank a lot more money than any theater owner has a right to. Are you hinting, Seppin? If we found up $35,000 entered at the bank in Jake Marvel's name, wouldn't that be enough evidence for Judge Gary to act? We thought of that, but... Well, we tried to get a court order to check a lot of those accounts, but the judge can't issue one without more evidence. Then why don't we break into the bank and take a look for ourselves? I suppose that would be technically a criminal act, but we can't think about that now. It's just what the judge has been waiting for. Well, what are we waiting for? Here he is. This way, Gabby. It's our only chance. Coming out the front. Remind me, 
I sure come across some mighty strange things when I was inventing my elixir. What are you two driving at? Things are bad enough now without you getting yourself shot or put in jail. Why, daughter, ain't we just been saying it can't be done? Well, I guess I'll adjourn to my laboratory. I just feel like doing a little experiment. <laughs> if there'd been another press in town, I could have refused the business. I can't understand it. Sheriff Jordan's never around when he's needed. How he managed to be on hand when the boys were leaving the Just bank... bad luck. The killing of poor Andy Baker gives them proof that the Laramie Gap gang are outlaws. And Bill wanted to settle in Deadwood. Linda, are you sorry for his sake alone? I thought perhaps you were one of the reasons Bill wanted to stay. Of course not. I hardly knew him. I'm glad to hear that. You must know how I feel about you, Linda. Although I suppose this isn't quite the place for what I was about to say. Then maybe you'd better wait, Ted. into me that way. Don't you know how to drive? Now you got us all jammed up. Very careful. $1,000 bills, Gabby. And signs of the Drover's Bank and shy. Maybe Marvel is just using Ted Carver's name. Then why would Marvel send some of them his own name, too? It doesn't make sense. And Miss Carver's really the man behind all this. But what about Linda? She works for Carver. I'll never believe she's mixed up in it. Here's three more. Hey, there are three in all six of these envelopes. That makes the other 18000 Gabby. Michael Barton. Say, doesn't he run the livery stable? Yeah, and here's Richard Sneed, owner of the general store. B.L. Stark and Harold Hughes. Why, well, he's the express agent. And Peter Wilson. Say, that's the Civic League. All these fellas belong to it. We've got some tall things to do, and we can't do it here. Let's head for the gap. Hey, 
I just got a message from Rock Point Station. That gang from Larry McGabb just held up the gold coach. Bill Brady was with him. Where's the sheriff? Let's get up a posse. The sheriff can't handle this. We will. What? Bill Brady wouldn't do a thing like that. Coach guards couldn't have been mistaken about who held him up. Thanks, Joe. I'll get an extra out right away. I know it's bad for you, Linda. You thought a lot of Bill Brady. He did mean a lot to me, but I realize now I really never knew very much about him. Well, we've got to get out an extra. I know. But the minute it's in type, I'm going to the gas. But Brady's probably left the country. Maybe he has. But if he's still there, I'm going to see him. We just got another message at the express office. None of the bullion was taken. Just the currency. Whose currency? Every packet that contained one of those thousand dollar bills. It's clear now. Too clear. We gotta work. Work fast. They're guarding the pass. We're expecting the posse to attack. I was afraid you might have left. Not me. Didn't I tell you once that I understand dead wood? Yes, but you didn't say anything about robbing stagecoaches. Was that your idea? It sure was, and it worked like a charm. But why? We was getting evidence for Judge Gary. You mean you didn't take anything? Nothing but the professor's money. And there certainly ain't no claim to take back what's yours. Then you got the evidence for the judge? We got the money, all right. And it was under Jake Marvel's name? It's hard to say, Linda, knowing how you feel about him. But an even dozen of Dad's bills were found consigned under Ted Carver's name. Ted Carver? You don't mean... We don't think you've got anything to do with it. We know you only work for him. You don't believe it. You don't think Ted's a thief. Well, he had the money. Well, somebody must be using his name. Ted's been fighting this sort of thing ever since he came here. It looked that way, except when there's a skunk in the chicken coop. Do you remember when we decided to break into the bank? The sheriff and Ripper come along just as pat as you please. The only man that could have tipped him off was Ted Carver. He was there when we planned the whole thing. Yeah, but he wasn't around when we figured out that stage hold up. And it come off slicker than a weasel. But you might as well accuse me. I was with you when you decided to break into the bank. I thought you had become a real bandit and I was wrong. Maybe you're making the same mistake about Ted Carver. Maybe. Will you do us a favor? Of course. Gabby? I don't think we ought to risk keeping your money around here. Huh? Young fella, are you even toying with some pernicious idea that I should let that $35,000 out of my hands? It's not only money, it's evidence. If a party should break in here and take it away from us, everything would be wasted. I think Bill's right, Professor. And if he is right, which I ain't admitting, none whatsoever. Where is he going to put my money that's safer than here, where it belongs? I figured to have Linda take it to Judge Gary. That is, if you're willing to risk it. Then no matter what happens, the judge got the goods on him. That's right. He's the only one who can use that evidence. And the quicker we get it to him, the better. Well, daughter, it was nice while we had it. Here it is, in the same express company envelope them skunks shipped it in, endorsed by him to their banks all over the country. And don't forget, young lady, you're carrying a whole dad blame circus there. You better hurry on in, and as soon as it gets dark enough for me to slip into town, I'll get in touch with Judge Gary. If that posse don't get here first to sort of occupy your time. What'd you find out? Well, in the first place, I found a new entrance to the gap straight across from Indian Rock. A hidden opening in the cliff. Hmm. Well, never mind that now. What about the girl? Well, I followed her to the camp. She went into the cabin. A few minutes later, when she rode away, I followed her until she got to the judge's house. And then I came here. You never got close enough to hear anything? The guard's post. I, I was afraid... You'd be afraid to get close to a rabbit. How do you do, Judge? How do you do? Linda, I heard you were here. I've been worried about you. What'd you find out the gap? They... They denied having anything to do with the stage holdup. And Bill Brady, was he there? He must have found some sort of evidence, otherwise he wouldn't be here. Linda couldn't find out anything. That's what she came here to tell me. 
Maybe they were lying to me. I don't know what to think. This is a great disappointment to me. I had hoped to accomplish something at last. Well, there's still a paper to get out, you know. I'm going to the telegraph office and wire Fort Smiley for a troop of cavalry. This money is sufficient evidence for me to declare Deadwood under martial law and clean it up for good and all. Either Bill Brady lied to Linda or she and the judge are lying to me. The judge has got that money, we've got to get it, and that's your job. Mine? I don't like messing with the government. I said get it. gives that evidence to Carver, he's completely in the clear. Okay. All right, I've seen you, Bill. Okay. See Monty Byrne? Monty Byrne? 
Funny person. He's dead in a macro. Dead? Who killed him? That Laramie Jap bunch, I guess. Say, ain't you? Hey! Gang. We don't want no innocent blood on our hands. I can't see nothing but innocent blood to show that. Only killy blood seems to be keeping to the rear. That's engine rocks. So that must be the place over there. Monty said it was right across. Just 
Mr. Marsh, no law. You're under arrest. Where's Bill Brady? Right here, Judge. Bill! Are you all right, Bill? I'm a lot better off than Carver. Oh, you got him, eh? Hello, Linda. Carver's lying right over there, and I'm betting he's got the money. How'd you fellas get here? They came from Fort Smiley in answer to my wire, and I brought them out as fast as I could. What about Gabby and the others? Gabby and his daughter are on their way over here. Clem and his bunch, along with the posse that was trying to capture them, are under arrest. That's the only way we can stop the battle. Let's go and see what we can find on Carver, Lieutenant. What you need is some of my elixir. Why, it makes bullets plumb beneficial. Are you sure it'll work? Sure. Certainly I'm sure. Why this elixir of mine? Just between you and me, in this particular case, I figure maybe the elixir could use a little help. I reckon I can leave that to you, huh? <laughs> I think you can release the Larry McGaff people now, Lieutenant. I just took this off ex-Sheriff Jordan. And I don't think we'll have any trouble getting the voters of Deadwood to make it legal. Thanks, Jed. Looks like I'm going to be settled down for fair. You think you're going to like it? 